Hello, fella. Hi there. Meet my friends. Court jester here and a sort of mountain brigand on this side. That's Matthew or something. This is part of a set of nestling toys, and I thought I'd do a little catch-up on toys that I've shown in the past, but didn't show these, well, there's three of them altogether, which nestle rather like Matryoshka dolls, you know, one inside the other. In fact, these ones are exactly our Matryoshka dolls. So let's have a go putting them up, shall we? There's one inside the other, inside the other, a sort of family of um, brigands. Here's the first one. That's probably the, um, uh, yeah, that's, that'll, be, that'll be the godfather, what they call it. This one, here we are. There's the next one in the series. They get smaller and smaller, and they're going to get younger and younger in a minute. Actually, we're going to have ones getting very young, which is rather fun. That one there, and it's the last one which caught my attention because it's such a nice way of finishing it. So that's a little set of the the male members of the family, and here's the the mole. Is it the um, the mobster's mole, or is it perhaps a little daughter of the of the father? A nice little set of nestling. Robbers or brigands. And a very similar vein here, this is, looks like a court jester. Well, it is actually, but it's actually supposed to be the joker of a set of um, courts, but in the form of three dimensional models. So that's the joker. Here's the king. And the queen's inside. So let's set the king up. Uh, something like that. There we are. There's the king. Here's the queen. Ooh, there's a jack coming out too as well. What's the last one going to be, I wonder? A jack? Oh, well, it's a, just a little piece at the end. We're showing all four suits, I suppose. So it makes a nice series, doesn't it? So both of them got five in them. They're all nestling inside the other, and I'd overlooked it. So here's something, by contrast, which is also nestling, but bizarre idea, Sesame Street thing, teaching the kids the alphabet. It's got about six boxes, one inside the other with ABC on the outside, ABC, and inside they go GHI all the way down to Z, or Z you call it. So there's G and H, but it's uh, an A box to start with. And we've got to go on getting smaller. Here we go. There's a B box with some others inside it. Here's a C box. A lovely series of characters in each one, which is very nicely finished, I think. And this is the D box. Oh, look at that. And it's getting up to about Q and R inside. Goodness me, all these characters appearing in Sesame Street. And another one. And the last one here, oh, it's got a funny little snake inside. Is that part of the sequence of the stories of Sesame Street? I don't know, anyway, it doesn't squeak. But it makes a nice little series like that. So a very nice nestling toys sequence which I'd overlooked and feel out to show. Good set, isn't it? So that's something I'd overlooked, but here's so a few more things I've got. Let's push it inside. Something here which I, did, I really didn't know I even had. I think this is from a long, long time ago, but I was showing padlock toys, novelty padlocks. And this is a little a car. It doesn't run, it doesn't, um, it's not powered at all, but it's got a padlock on it, which is extraordinary. That bit is a hearth, but it comes out. And it's got a combination thing here, and it's set for, what's it got? Six, six, four, eight in, in a row. When you set it at six, four, eight, it will come out. But if I miss it like that, it's now jammed and won't come out again. Extraordinary idea. So it is a little padlock for something small, like a little toy box for kids, but at the same time, it's a push car. So, oh no, it's, 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 it is powered. I had forgotten that. Look, it's powered. It's got a pullback mechanism. It's got a, oh, it's looking everything over. So it's a double bit of fun for kids. It's a padlock and a working sports car. Excellent. Something else I'd overlooked, and this is a very charming idea, was notepads, novelty notepad things. And this is a Japanese idea. And this is a series of notepads in the form of little leaves. You're supposed to write a little memo on it, like uh, gone to lunch or something. But these are all sort of somewhat heat sensitive. So when you warm them in the hand, they start sort of, um, they start curling up on the edges. There we are, starting to curl up there. So it's got, oh, it's, it's a very nice job here. I've got nice warm hands, you see. But they are intended to be little memo notes to leave, not, 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 not that the ones with a bit of stickiness on it, just something to leave on the desk to say where you've gone out for the day or a message for, for your husband or wife or for the kids and then the form of very exotic notepads. That was a very nice idea, that. Here's something I, bizarre I picked up in America. It's a double-headed nickel, would you believe? This was put inside it. And it's a coin they've made specially for kids, I think it is. So it's a question of heads I win, tails you lose. So it's got a head there, and when you turn it over, there's a head on the other side. A double-headed nickel. Specially made for kids to enjoy, to be able to fool their friends with. 
A nice one. Lots of blurb about how to play with it. So that was one thing I overlooked was coin things. The last item was something that Anthony Rizzo met when I first met him in, 19, in 2006, which is the, um, his very first version he made of the diamatic levitation. This is a beautiful job, this. He handed these out at G4G8 and said, without telling people what, what it was all about, uh, and said, what you've got to do is you've got to put the magnets out in a certain array, there's four neodymium magnets, so that it makes the piece of pyrolytic graphite, it's called, float over the top. And these were misset at the time, they were just put together randomly in the north-south. And you had to learn what was called the Halbach array, which is a series of north-north-south-south. That's, that's the clue, that's what you had to discover. It took a bit of time to do that, actually. When it was done, you got this lovely bit of levitation on the top. Let me just turn this over, see if it can work better the other way up. Yes, there we are, look. That is now levitating. But um, I've never seen it in the form of a, a puzzle that you actually had to work out yourself what the array was in order to create levitation like that. And it says it's as a highback. It's north here, north in the other diagonal, south here and south here. And you have to learn that by trial and error, I guess. That's what I had to do to find out how to make it levitate. And when it's working, there it is actually levitating. So that was the very first version of a this new generation, really, of, of diamagnetic levitation ones, where you raised a bit of carbon rather than the magnet itself, which is the, the, the earliest versions. So a lovely little uh, initial version of the thing. And of course, he's gone a long way since then in making big arrays that we have on our website now, which is a superb one. If you make a 10 by 10 array of this, and have flatland things, it's, it's amazing. But this is the first one he came up with and set it up as a puzzle for you. Would you have solved it yourself? Mm. I did eventually, it took me some time.